Good day, students. You are welcome to the classroom once again. And uh, my name is Adijobi Monini Nola, AGB Chemist, your usual chemistry instructor. Our lesson for the day is alloys. And uh, let me quickly take the objectives of today's lesson. One, we will look at alloys in our everyday life. We will look at definition of alloys. We would like to see how alloys are formed. That's number three objective. Number four, desirable properties of alloys over metals. And number five, economic importance or uses of alloys. So let's start with the first objective, alloys in daily life. The truth is alloys are bound in the materials we use in our day-to-day -day activities in all spheres, whether they be domestic, official, industrial, and as students in schools and in a lot of the things you do, even in your games. So everyone uses alloys directly or indirectly. Here are a few examples of what I mean. Number one, many of you have had to visit the dentist because you had holes in your teeth. That substance that the dentist used to fill the holes in your teeth, we call it dentist amalgam. It is an alloy. Number two, coins are made from alloys. Sadly, I'm not too sure many of you have ever seen coins before. But if you have never seen one, ask your parents or guardians to please show you one as soon as possible. Coins are made from alloys. Number three. You've heard about stainless steel several times. Stainless steel actually is an alloy made from iron and carbon, and it is used to make a lot of appliances in all spheres of life. And number four, the boys would really, really identify with me in this. The magnets found in radios, in telephones, in loudspeakers, and lots of magnets used industrially are actually alloys. So this is just to cite a few examples of alloys in daily activities or daily life. So let's go straight away to define alloys. Alloys are homogeneous. By that I mean uniform. They are homogeneous mixtures of two or more elements. There are two types of alloys based on their constituents or on their mode of formation. Let me take the definition again. Alloys are homogeneous mixtures of two or more elements, and they are basically two types based on their mode of formation. So let's take formation of alloys. Alloys could be formed by one, a homogeneous mixture of a metal and non-metal, e.g. steel, like I said the other time, which contains iron and carbon, Two, it could be formed as a result of homogeneous mixture of two or more metals, e.g. brass, which contains copper and zinc. The truth is there are more of this second class of alloys, that is, those that contain two or more metals than the first class. The constituent of alloys, that is, whether they be metals or non-metals, do not undergo any chemical change during formation. This means alloys are not compounds, and so they do not have a chemical formula. Again, you need to note that the percentage composition or proportion of the elements in alloys are not constant universally. And then the molten forms of the constituent elements of these um, alloys, whether they be metal and non-metal or two or more metals, are now mixed together, allowed to solidify on cooling to give the appropriate alloy. Quickly, let's take desirable properties of alloys. Alloys have many properties that are better than their constituent elements. Number one, they are harder and stronger than the metals. Number two, they have greater tensile strength, that is, the ability to withstand stress and heavy weights more than the constituent metals. Number three, alloys are more lustrous, that is, they glitter and shine better. Number four, 
they are more resistant to corrosion. By that, I mean rusting. And number five, they are more widely used for all the earlier stated four reasons over their constituent metals. I'll give you time to ruminate over what you have learned so far, and then we'll continue later. Thank you. You are welcome back from the break. In this segment, we will be looking at um, the economic importance of alloys or uses of alloys. And let me quickly say that um, um, a lot of the times when you face questions or have to answer questions on alloys in your examination, the definition and then the constituent of alloys is a major question you already face. So please just assume that I have treated a question on definition of alloys, uses of alloys in daily life, and then formation of alloys. So let's go back to our objective for this segment. And I did say it is economic importance of alloys. That's one way the question could be framed. Another way it could be framed is uses of alloys. And um, I need to say that, of course, we are going to be looking at quite a number of alloys, but definitely nobody will ask you to state the uses of all these alloys. They may just pick one or two. So that still means you have to know the components and the uses of at least two or three. So let me start this way. State the economic importance or uses of any two of the following alloys. One, alnico. 2. Brass, 3. Bronze, 4. Duralumin, 5. Silver coinage. So let's start with the first one, Alnico. Looking at the name, I'm sure you will readily agree with me that that alloy contains aluminum, then it contains nickel, cobalt, and iron. Aluminum, nickel, cobalt, and iron, al -nico. And what are the uses or the economic importance? One, it is used to make small permanent magnets found in loudspeakers, telephones, and sometimes industrial magnets. Number two, brass. Brass contains copper and zinc. And this alloy is used to make various machine parts, parts of clocks and watches, ornaments and general metal work production. Many of you may have ornaments at home that contain brass. Please again ask your parents or guardians the constituent of some of the metallic uh, ornaments that are used in your homes. Number three, bronze. Bronze contains copper and tin and this alloy is used to make coins, bells, you are familiar with your school bell. Some churches use bells. Lots of organizations use bells. It's also used to make various machine parts and at the same time for general metal work production. And then number four, duralumin. Duralumin. Duralumin contains aluminum, copper, manganese, and magnesium. Aluminum, copper, manganese and magnesium and what is it used for is used to make parts of aircrafts ships cars railway coaches and many machine parts and let's look at the last one before we take a break silver coinage silver coinage silver coinage contains silver and copper and it is essentially used for the production of coins. You see why you need to ask your parents or your guardians to show you examples of Nigerian coins or other coins from other countries. Now take a, uh, break, uh, a quick break to what we did at the last lesson. I did say that there are two types of alloys based on their mode of formation and I told you some are formed as a combination of metals and non-metals and then some are formed as a combination of two or more metals. Most of the ones we are taking during this lesson and for your level 
are those made as a result of combination of two or more metals. So you will see that I have not really treated anyone that has metals or non-metals, uh, metals and non-metals in their constituents. In the next lesson, we'll consider one of them, which is the most popular that you need to know at your level. Please spend time to go through what you have learned. Thank you very much. I trust you have been able to write down all that we did in the last lesson. So I'm welcoming you back to the last segment of this lesson. And um, we, we are still considering the economic importance or uses of alloys. And remember, at the last lesson, I told you that, and I'm sure you have been able to see it anyway, that all the alloys we considered were those containing two or more metals. Now, I'm going to start with one that contains a metal and a non-metal, and that is steel. Steel. Steel contains iron and uh, carbon. It is used for plumbing, general plumbing works, and particularly production of water pipes in industries. Now, let's go to the next one that is very close to it, stainless steel, stainless steel. Stainless steel contains iron, chromium, and nickel, and it is used for making cutlery, hospital equipments and tools. I'm sure you are very, very familiar with cutlery. A lot of you can give me examples of that. And of course, the pots and the many domestic appliances that you use. Now, the third one is, um, type metal type type metal type metal contains lead tin and antimony type metal contains lead tin and antimony this alloy is used again like steel for plumbing general plumbing works and for the production of lead pipes the next one is um Dentist amalgam. Dentist amalgam. Dentist amalgam contains mercury and copper. Remember when we treated metals, we did say that mercury is the only liquid metal that we have. So this mercury, when combined with copper to give a homogeneous mixture, which is called dentist amalgam, is used essentially for dental fillings. So when next you go to your dentist, tell that doctor that, sir or ma, I know the chemical components of what you're using to fill the holes in my teeth. Now, let's look at the next one, soft solder, soft solder, S-O-L-D-E-R. That contains tin and lead tin and lead it is used for welding i'm sure you have seen a welder at work before so that metal uh, metallic substance that they use to connect two or more metals together that is what we call soft solder and it contains tin and lead so again i said it's used for welding for soldering and at the same time for plumbing the last one we are going to be looking at is nitinol, nitinol. That contains nickel and titanium, nickel and titanium. This alloy is used for the production of catheters. Catheters are actually used in hospitals. They are like plastic pipes used for Treatment. Let me just leave it at that because we are not in a medical class. And they are also used to produce super elastic needles and uh, wires. Again, let me take it again. Nitinol used to produce catheters, super elast uh, elastic needles and wires, and it contains nickel and titanium. I have indirectly treated the questions you will meet or you might meet on alloys. So if you are asked to state the economic importance of any of the alloys, 
please take note of them. It still means the same thing as their uses. You are asked to mention the uses of alloys in daily life. We have treated it and you have asked to define metals or explain the formation of alloys. We have treated all of them. I wish you the very best, not just in these exams, but in life generally. Once again, my name is Adejobi Monini Nola Ajibike. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you.